So, honey, stay tuned to check it out. Love you all so very much. I don't know what that was. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that was. No idea what that was. No idea. I think I'm done. Hey, beautiful people. This is your girl, Shimon Monet. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you are not, welcome back. If you haven't guessed it, <laughs> this look that I'm rocking is definitely inspired by the month of February, Black History Month. I bought these earrings probably over a year ago. I think I got these maybe last summer at just a local hair beauty supply store. And they inspired this makeup look. It's really simple, um, but fun, festive. I don't know. I might have to bring these earrings out for this Friday night Black Panther preview. You know. Dude, oh, oh. just saying, I might have to bring them out. I'm not sure yet. But nonetheless, if you are interested in seeing how I created this look, then just keep on watching. Thanks. P.S. This is kind of like a bomb makeup tutorial. Bomb meaning black owned makeup brands. I use the Nesta Myricks Foundation, AJ Crimson, Juvia's All in the Eyes. The lashes are by Destiny Lachey. She's a black YouTuber. Um, crayon case, if you guys haven't already heard, I know you heard about that box of colors. I don't, I mean the box of crayons. Um, eyeshadow palette that was like breaking the internet. Didn't get that palette because it's sold out for the restock, but that's okay. I have some other crayon case products that I used as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of black owned makeup brands went into this black history month tutorial. So keep on watching to check it out. Thanks. All right, so let's get started. The first product that I'm going to use is by the Crayon Case. This is the Black Owned Makeup brand. And I'm going to be using their Eyebrow Pomade in the shade Ebony. I'm going to fly through this part. If you guys are interested in an in depth tutorial, I do have another tutorial um, up on my channel dedicated just to brows. But I'm going to fill this in quick and we're going to keep it moving. So I'm using LA Girl Pro Concealer in the shade Toast to clean up my brows. And I'm also going to use it as a base for my eyeshadow. And I'm just using a cosmetic wedge to blend that out. So the first palette that I'm going to go on with is the Masquerade palette by Juvia's Place. I'm using these two shades as my transition shades, Zulu and Burkina. Juvia's is the second black-owned makeup brand that I'm using in this tutorial. All eyeshadows that I'm going to use for this look are all by Juvia's Place. You guys already know by now that I absolutely, positively, 100% love all of the products that I have from Juvia's Place. I think there's only one or two palettes that I don't have. Um, But yeah, if you guys don't have their palettes, do yourself a favor and check them out. So now that I've carved out my crease with the two transition shades, again, I have hooded eyes, so I take the transition shades higher than my crease. Now that third shade, Ada, is going right below those two transition shades. And it's closer to my actual crease line. This is the third color. And that helps just to get that gradient effect. So I'm going to semi-cut my crease. It's not going to be super sharp. But I'm using this LA um, Girl White Eyeshadow Base. A dupe is the NYX Jumbo Pencil and Milk. I actually just, I like this one better. It's a couple dollars cheaper. And for me, it's just a little bit easier to blend out. But they're both great, super affordable. So I'm just using this to, again kind of cut my crease this is going to um, help the eyeshadow to pop i'm going to go in with the red eyeshadow so this white base is going to just help that color to show up that much more on my skin tone and i'm using my fingers to help blend it out the warmth from my fingers um, helps it blend out and then i'm also just going to go back in with that cosmetic wedge 
to help it blend out some more. And you guys don't mind all my faces. My daughter was next to me during the entire tutorial. So if you see me talking and dancing and I'm, I'm dealing with a three-year-old. So <laughs> don't mind the faces. So now that I've carved out where my eye shadows for the, the lid are going to go, I'm just cleaning up the edges of that base, going back in with the same colors I used before for my transition shades. So here, I wasn't exactly sure which red I wanted to go over my lid and which one I wanted to be in the outer portion of my eye. So I'm just taking the two reds. This is the first red. This is from the Festival palette. I got this palette on the pre-launch because I know it officially just came out um, yesterday on the 15th. But I ordered it on the pre-launch and I got it in like two days. So if you don't have it yet, don't fret. But I was swatching the two reds from the Festival palette and then the other red that's in the Saharan palette. So then I figured out which one I wanted to be first. And th that was the Kodo from the Saharan palette. It just was a, the red wasn't as deep. If you guys saw those swatches, it was the lighter red. So I'm using that in the inner and all over my lid. First, I applied it with my fingers. Now I'm going in with an e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush. It's very dense and very short to pack the color onto my lid. And again, because I have hooded eyelids, I have to take the color up a bit higher than my natural crease. That way, when I open my eyes, the color still shows. So I'm just packing that color onto my eyelids, blending it out. You're going to see me constantly leaning back and looking at the mirror, turning my head side to side. I just like to make sure everything is even. So now I'm going into the Festival palette with the darker red shade, taking that same e.l.f. eyeshadow C brush, and I'm going to pack that color on the outer area of my eye, blending it into the first red shade. And again, using different shades of red helps for the gradient effect because I am going to get darker as I go out. So the first red is brighter. The second red is a little bit darker. And as we continue, I'm going to intensify the eye look with deeper shadows. Yeah, see how intense I was? <laughs> I just I just really like to make sure that my colors are blended and that my eyes look symmetrical. So once I was content, I'm going into the Zulu palette and I'm taking that light brown shade. I'll link this brush, but it's a dome shaped brush, a Morphe brush that I'm using now to pack the color just directly in that outer V area, literally like making a sideways V. Next, I'm going, with, going in with a deeper brown. This is the shade Kenya from the Nubian 2 palette and literally just layering these shadows. So right right behind and almost on top of that first light brown shade, taking the dark brown shade and I'm blending it out. And as you can see, I'm also bringing it up so that it can blend into the top of the eyeshadow as well. And the last shade I'm going in with is black. This black is from the Saharan palette. It's called Chad. It is extremely pigmented. So with any black shadow or really dark shadows, you want to start off with a very light hand it's much easier to build up the color than to start too heavy and then you have a hot mess. So I'm taking a tiny, tiny, tiny bit and just blending it out. And you guys can see how the eye look has certainly changed just from that, you know, two reds. And now I have a whole complete eye look. Um, next, I'm just going to go in. I believe this is a Morphe M329 tapered blending brush. That I'm using now just to blend everything together so there are no harsh lines and yeah I was just having like this was like a struggle tutorial like all my eyeshadows that were broken were falling and I was making a mess but it was all worth it in the end so now I'm going in with just a wipe to clean up um, the areas to clean up around my eye just sharpen it up and now it's time to wing it out I'm going to skip through this. Again, I have a wing tutorial. <laughs> um, if you want to see slower how I do my wings, but I use the Juvia's Place Gel Liner in Black. It's waterproof. It's smudge proof. I love it. It's very creamy. It glides on really well. So that's what I did to, to outline my eye. 
and to do the wing, I did switch to um I switched to a pen. So it's just a little bit easier for me. So now that my wings are done, I'm going back in with the same concealer shade I used under my brows to clean up my wing. Gonna blend that out. And aside from lashes, the eyes are done. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the face. If you guys are not familiar with my channel, I have extremely dry skin, so I prime on top of prime on top of prime and moisturize. I've already moisturized my face, but I'm going in with the NYX Tea Tree Skin Elixir Primer. Then I'm going to go in with a Maybelline Blur and Smooth Primer. Then I'm going to follow it up with a pore filler, just because I want my base to be hydrated. In as smooth as possible. I don't really have textured skin per se, even though it's super dry and my skin is acting kind of crazy right now. But generally speaking, I don't have textured skin, but I do have large pores. So I like to fill them so that I can have an even base before I move on to foundation. So all of the all of the foundation that I'm gonna be using in this tutorial are black owned makeup brands. The first foundation that I'm going to use for my overall base is by a lady named Danessa Myricks. If you are not familiar with her work, do yourself a favor and check her out. She's phenomenal. I think she's actually on, on tour right now. or I want to say she's like on tour right now. She's an amazing makeup artist and a photographer. So you guys definitely should check out her Instagram page. She has flawless work and she's really big on skin and illumination so this particular foundation is the vision cream cover i want to say there's like 26 shades i believe i'll 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 fix it if i'm incorrect but a wide array of shades it is very very pigmented a little bit goes a long way so i am in the shade w06 which means warm so as you can as you guys can see it's blending out flawlessly but there's also a lot of color. This is a full coverage foundation. I don't even think I use a full pump of the foundation because I don't I don't need a lot of coverage per se. And it blends out so well like a, literally a tiny bit goes a long way so you don't have to pump, pump, pump a lot with this foundation because it's so pigmented and there's so much color in the actual foundation itself. So I'm blending that out. And to highlight and contour, I'm going to go in with my AJ Crimson Cream Foundation. And these two foundations together really complement each other very well. So the first shade I'm going in with is four, and I'm just going to use my fingers to apply it. Everywhere I would typically highlight underneath my eye, down the bridge of my nose, my chin, my forehead. And I'm going to take 4.5, it's just a little bit darker, and just pop a tiny bit under where I'm going to contour. And that's just going to make um, my contour pop that much more. This is a step I don't always do, but with this foundation, it blends out so well and it doesn't leave me with that stark contrast. So I can do it with this foundation. And I recently posted a full face with this AJ Crimson foundation. So if you guys are interested in that, you can go check it out. So to blend it out, I'm going to use the same brush that I use for my foundation. I'm just spraying my face with a little Mario Badescu. Um, cucumber water, but I'm using the same brush to blend out the um, foundation that I put right underneath where I'm going to contour. And now I'm going in with a beauty blender, and this beauty blender is called a Crayon Cutie, and it is by the Crayon Case. And you see how cute it is? They're super cute. And she also, um, it's, it's, the Crayon Case is by Supa out of New Orleans. She has, she first released the multicolor blenders and she also sells them in solid black now as well. I haven't gotten any of the old black ones, um, but I have a few of the crayon cuties and so far so good. One of them did rip on me while I was 
after I washed it. Um, but that's just putting it out there. One of them did rip a little bit um, because of the way the colors are stacked. But I'm thinking the black one more than likely shouldn't do that because it's all one solid um, texture. But that's what I'm using to blend out my highlight. And I just wanted to brighten it up a tiny bit. So I went in with some ColourPop concealer. Um, and these concealers are super like full coverage. So I, I apologize because I get out of frame a little bit. But I just was really trying to make sure I was blending it out really well. And they also, they dry down. I don't want to say that they dry down matte, but they're a lot drier um, than like my LA Pro Concealer. So the fact that I went in with the cream foundation first and then on top with the ColourPop for me and my skin type, the two work together really well because the ColourPop by itself is too drying for me. But again, the combination worked out really well. So I'm taking that foundation brush again just to blend everything together. Don't want any harsh lines. And this is the problem you have when you have way too many brushes. <laughs> I'm trying to find my concealer brush. And now that I found it, that is a e.l.f. concealer brush. And I'm going in with the shade um, AJ, Crimson, AJ Crimson Foundation Shade 6.5. And I'm using that to contour my nose. And because I have this head wrap and like my hair is not down, Normally, I just do my nose contour super quick, but because of the way for this look, I actually used a brush and actually took my time and did my nose contour, and I actually loved the way it turned out. I don't always do it this, like, in-depth, but I liked it. And this shade is perfect because the shade I'm going to actually use to contour the rest of my face is super dark, but this particular shade is not too dark so it doesn't look like I just drew two lines on the side of my face and as you can see I'm making sure I blend it out very well but I still get that nice chisel contour look that I like so now I'm taking the darkest shade this is the darkest shade in his foundation line and it's number eight and I'm applying it with with the light hand because it is very dark but again, the, the great thing about this foundation is it's very buildable. So if you use a little bit, you have a little bit. But if you want to build it up, if you want the color to be intensified, you can layer the foundation and it blends out literally like a dream. Like it's so easy to blend. It's ridiculous. And I'm blending it out with my foundation brush. And do you guys see like how even though I haven't used like a, a powder highlight a powder highlight yet, how my under eye is already glowing? And I didn't put any illuminator on underneath the foundation. This is just Vanessa and then AJ Crimson and a tiny bit of ColourPop. So I love that when your skin can glow naturally before you even have to add any products to it. So I'm setting my highlight with my Sasha Buttercup. And then I'm going to set my face with Black Opal Finishing Powder in the shade Deep. Next, I'm going to set my contour. That's just an angled a Wet n Wild brush. Another Crayon Case product. This is their Contour Resistion Notebook. So it's just a contour palette. But again, the theme of the Crayon Case is they have a school supplies theme. So a lot of their products are named after school supplies. So I think it's super cute. The contour palette, I've been using it a lot lately. I really like it. The colors are pigmented. There's actually two shimmer shades, like highlighters in there that I haven't tried yet. But the powders, the matte powders, I really like. The pigmentation is great and they blend out easily. So I'm just setting my contour with that. And we are almost done with the face.
Next, I'm going in with my current favorite blush by Juvia's Place. This is from the Saharan Palette. The Saharan Blush Palette Volume 1. <laughs> And that's my favorite shade, and I just put a tiny bit of it because the eyes are so bold. I didn't want to be too heavy-handed with the blush. But I did want to just add that flush of color back to my face. So that's done. And now I'm going to set my face before I go in with the highlighter. So the first highlighter that I'm going to use is by e.l.f. You guys know this is my favorite. And I, I really think they discontinued it because I can't, I don't see it in stores anymore. I don't see it online. So they may have very well discontinued it. I've had this forever, but a little bit goes a long way. So that's why I still have it. It was a dollar. I love it. So I'll have to find a dupe for it. <laughs> um, but next I'm going in with Anglola. This is by the Crayon Case. Y'all, this highlighter is so huge. I think I might have paid 20 bucks, and literally, I don't think I'm ever going to run out of this highlighter. <laughs> because it's not pressed down. It's it's actually, it's the pigment in loose form. And it's huge. And it's extremely pigmented. Like, extremely pigmented. And you can build it up. I always blend my highlights out because as much as I love highlighter, most times I'm not really going for like a bam in your face type of glow. But if that's what you want, you can build this up and you will certainly get that highlight that you can see from a mile away. So now that that's blended out, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the lips. So I'm using a matte lip kit. So I had Carmex on and I already exfoliated. So I'm just using a paper towel to wipe off all the, the Carmex so there's no oil on my lip so that um, my lippy doesn't transfer. So this is the Bold Brand Cosmetics, another black-owned makeup brand. The lip kits are 20 bucks, and you get a lip liner as well as a matte lipstick. I have three of these shades now, three kits. When I tell you that they do not transfer, they do not move, they do not budge, you can drink out of a water bottle, a straw, a glass, your lipstick will not transfer onto any of those objects. <clears throat> I love them. The pigmentation is crazy. And they're not over drying. Now I will say with any matte lipstick, you do have to make sure that you exfoliate your lips before. Again, I, I was hydrating my lips during this whole process. But as long as you do the right prep, your lips will look fabulous and the color will last for hours. Like I've worn these to church, getting ready early in the morning and had it on all day and it doesn't budge. I've eaten dinner, everything. It doesn't go anywhere. So definitely check them out. So that's it, guys. I put my lashes on off camera and we're done. All right, you guys, this is the finished look <laughs> P.S. I just washed my hair it is not done it's washed or blow dried I gotta, guess I gotta flat iron it do something to it <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, so I definitely hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, definitely feel free to leave them below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Definitely share it, you know, spread the love. Make sure you're following me on Instagram, definitely. I have a Facebook page and Twitter, or Shimon Monet, just like this YouTube channel. I love you all so very much. Until next time, be blessed. Bye.